My name is Paul Nurse. I'm director of the Francis Crick Institute, which is a, a biomedical um, research institution in central London next to St Pancras Station. I'm also a researcher, um, a yeast researcher, but interested in um, fundamental processes of life, in particular um, how cells work and how they divide. So I'm both sort of run science and I also do science. I was interested in signalling pathways in yeast cells and it turned out that um, some of those uh, signalling pathways were um, related to work that a colleague of mine, Peter Parker, um, who was also working in the Institute, was also working on in mammalian cells. And these were relevant um, to how hearts worked. And I could bring to bear to the problem um, work on yeast, which is uh, very effective. You can, it's cheap, it's fast, and we could genetically manipulate everything, gene edit, as it's now called, um, even then, 30 years ago. It's only now been possible to do it effectively in recent years in um, human beings, for example. So we worked together him connecting to um, the signalling in um, hearts, me doing more basic research in the equivalent signalling in yeast cells. So that was my connection with the British Heart Foundation. What was really rather adventurous of the foundation was to fund somebody working on yeast research when of course they were working on, uh, are interested in, in hearts and human hearts at that. And I think that's something that we're now uh, more comfortable with when we've realised the unity of life from simple organisms such as yeast through to complicated organisms like ourselves. And we can use um, simple organisms um, to understand more quickly how things work in our own cells. But back then that wasn't really fully appreciated, now more so. I'm grateful for what the British Heart Foundation um, did supporting my own research, but I'm also very grateful for the um, whole heart community who frankly saved my own life. I was um, going to Antarctica, deep into Antarctica, to Scott Base, where Scott started his expedition to the South Pole. So it was a long way from civilization, um, a long way from hospitals, and I had a very thorough medical check before I went. And that medical check detected um, a, a, a problem with my heart that had simply not been recognised before. And that turned out to be a, an, an early indicator of quite serious disease. I had five arteries that were partially blocked. Um, none of them were causing a problem with blood supply, so I had no muscle um, problems, no muscle decay. But I was one of those people who could have suffered from sudden death when the plaque in the artery breaks um, away and then causes a blockage and starving the heart of oxygen leading to a heart attack. And um, th this was quite a dangerous situation. Um, it was discovered, I remember, 22nd, 23rd of December. Um, in, I was in Oxford at the John Radcliffe Hospital. They operated on me on, I think, the 2nd of January. So I was back in work within two or three weeks of the um, heart surgery. So um, I'm really grateful for those surgeons and still grateful for the cardiologists who look after me. The tools that we can now employ to study important biological problems are dramatically improved today compared with 30 years ago. So you can do um, much more effective research. If you can do so many things you can get lured into just describing what's going on, which seems like good quality science. What you really need to do is think about what are the important questions, think about how you can really address them in critical ways. We are working in collaboration with BHF to try and um, uh, discover from around the world um, early career um, vascular biologists who can come here and work in our um, good environment and who can strengthen heart research in the UK. So we've got a deliberate um, search for uh, young researchers of that type embedded in our open search for biomedical scientists from around the world.